Right, well, not one to want to disappoint you. Uh, but I also have the other kit. <laughs> Shame. Shame. Uh, yes, so I, I just had to do it. I had to review both of these one way or the other. Um, I really need to make sure that I show you what's actually in these things and, you know, kind of help you understand exactly what you get from buying this kind of kit. So here we have the Tomb Kings of Kemri edition of Warhammer the Old World. Now, this one is more expensive, retailing at £175. And again, just to reiterate this, I don't get anything for free. I have to spend my own money to, in order to do these videos. So the more people watch, you know, the better for me. I'm not, you know, I don't even earn anything from my YouTube channel. I do it for me, you know, um, because, you know, I need, I need to do these things. They, they, <laughs> you know, for, I've probably mentioned in many videos before now why I do this, so I won't carry on again. But here we go. Tim Kings. Uh, now, before I open this box, I'm going to hit with a, a sort of a major important fact here, okay? I did notice this quite a while back, you know, so just give you an idea here. This Leech Priest on Necolith Bone Dragon is beautiful. You know, you don't even have to get the thing out to see that it is a work of beauty. It is beastly, okay? So... One thing I noticed about it straight away is it's got a bent, a very bent over posture. Um, so very, very much like the traditional uh, dragons and wyverns of the old world. The other thing is, uh, although it looks like a big model, it looks nowhere near as potentially big as the Age of Sigmar ones. And again, um, although we liked big monsters in it, the old world, they weren't ridiculously oversized compared to the rest of the models whereas you know in things like age of sigma the the beasts are supposed to be over the top so i think the, you know so here's one thing i know that that is significantly bigger than anything else in the bretonian kit it's obvious hence you're paying what 20 pound more however um looking here straight away they are old okay they are old old models now they might have been recast at some point resprued but i know for a fact that these things are old okay the actual poses the positions i suspect that they are still based upon the first ever skeleton kits the first multi-part skeleton kits they're that old so, um, one thing that I mentioned in my other one is a lot of this sprues were from 2003. I'd be curious to see what's actually on these sprues. So, let's start off with, again, like with the other box set, you get templates, as you would expect. Um, am I disappointed that these aren't a different colour? Yes. Okay. Give us something different. Okay. Because come on, you've given us two different box set. Would it so difficult to give us a second color to our templates just to differentiate them? A gripe, a minor one. But you know what? I, I think I'm paying. You know, <laughs> give me something. Uh, once again, <laughs> inch rulers. One reasonably straight the other one it just seems i don't get this what causes this guys it's just like i don't know maybe maybe this one's for measuring bananas <laughs> yeah i just noticed this it seems to be something about these range rulers that one bends and the other goes nice you know pretty much straight it's every single time i've ever seen one of these boxes again same color red Again, mm, why, why not give us something unique to the Tomb Kings? So the, 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 the Bretonian one was Bretonian and the Tomb King one was Tomb King. So, come, you know, maybe 
maybe I'm being a bit, uh, you know, over the top there. I don't know, but I feel that was a that was something that maybe a little bit of extra thought would have helped out it with. Make one blue, make one red, make one green, or something. Okay, give us a difference if we've got two different kits. Okay, I'm going to come across to the skeleton horseman a bit later on, uh, and. Uh, I think I am also going to make you wait for my opinion on the Burn Dragon. You shall have to uh, grin and bear it and wait for that. And we're going to head straight over and pull out, hopefully. Ooh. Now, these appear, oh, these, these look like the skeleton horsemen. So I, I want to actually find the skeletons themselves. And the reason behind this is because that there, that right there, okay, I say with almost complete confidence, okay, that is the same skeleton kit, excuse me, <clears throat> same skeleton kit that was made in the 90s. Okay, I, 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 I have a memory of it, of getting it of dealing with the dang thing breaking and bits falling and disappearing and the skeletons being so fragile. That's more about me being young and not knowing how to handle a miniature. I'm not dissing Games Workshop, by the way, on that one, uh, because, you know, it was really good at the time. <sighs> right. Now, according to this... It was 2005 that this sprue has been maybe updated. But I am certain that if I went back and searched Games Workshop 1990s skeleton kit. Oh God, I think, you know, memory's tricky, isn't it? Memory can lie to us memory can confuse us but i am so convinced that i am right about this so is it a gripe is it an issue am i annoyed that they haven't updated the skeleton range to be modern yeah i am you know, uh, I think if I were to head back to the Vampire Council when they were last done, I, I am certain that they changed the skeletons in the Vampire Council to make them look unique. So here's the thing about this, and let's just make, let's get you know let's air this right now, okay? I know somewhere in here will be the converter for this to turn this into Tomb Kings. But right now, these could also be used as generic skeletons. So if a uh, if you wanted to say you were doing um, a vampire count, you could use them. If you were doing uh, just if you just wanted skeletons to be part of like a, a story, you could make skeletons up and just be. Old World Skeletons instead of Kemri Skeletons. So the kit is actually good in that way. Uh, and here's the thing. See, I remember this thing here. I remember the Beastman Skull. One of these is a Beastman. One, it can have curly horns or it can have straight horns. I remember this from my youth. I am convinced that this is the same kit from the 90s. Do I hate it? No, I love the kit. You know, it's so strange to say that. You look at something like this and you, you feel like, should I be angry that they're passing off this old kit? No, no I'm not angry. No, I don't hate it. Could it have been updated? Well, that's a big question, isn't it? Maybe. Maybe it could have been. Now... The problem is now, um, they are just generic skeletons, okay? Uh, um, you need something to add to them to make them Tomb Kings. You have to actually... So I'm assuming somewhere in here, in this box, is exactly what I'm looking for. 
Okay, so, you know, they, they, they have the options of spears and uh, melee weapons, just regular swords and axes. They also have, but the spears are interesting because they look more like um, gate railings. Okay, now we're going to have the same situation looking at the cavalry. So this is, again, something that as soon as you look at it, it jumps out at you. Okay, again, I guess it's going to say two, right? So it's saying 2002 on the back. So again, you can see that same trend in appearance. There's not much kind of decoration on them. Um, I'm sure if I was being like obsessive and had a good look at the rib cage, I'll probably say the rib cage, you know, isn't a good one. You can even tell that probably the skull it's kind of that old style skull that Games Workshop use. It probably, um, it look, you know, it's skull like, but, you know, is it like actually what a skull looks like in reality? Again, you've got these kind of spears here, wooden spears, a very basic skeleton arm. Nothing that says this is a Kenry skeleton. It could be an old world skeleton horseman, you know, and it could just pretend, but because we know that they updated the, the the vampire counts quite a while ago you know years and years ago so that they had different types of cavalry and things like that so you know these these changes matter uh, so but the thing is again you, you don't you i know for a fact that these can be just built as they are okay and you could use them as an you know, although the rules are for Kemri, you could just fold it and make it, you know, generic skeleton army, undead army. Oh, it's my old world army. Maybe you make more beastman skulls. You know, make sure you use all the beastman skulls so that you really say, well, it's not Kemri this, it's definitely an old world army. See, we've got another big stack of skeletons. So, you know, you got a lot of foot troops, uh, you know, really a lot of foot troops, actually. It's, it's a huge amount of foot troops, to be quite honest. Uh, and, right, I need to find the thing that actually makes these Tomb Kings. Here we go. This is it. So what's a positive about this? So let me check, again, 2002, this is when they updated, I'm pretty certain that's when they updated this line last. That is a long time for these same models to be part of it. Positives, you can see you've got bowman options. Look carefully as well. They've, they've tried the best to add a little, you know, bandaging flush to, to infer Kenry burial rights, you know, for mummification but of course they've all rotted away and now they're all bones so we do have the ability to turn them into bowmen that's a positive thing we have the kemri shields again very clearly tomb king we have importantly this is what matters kemri heads because if they didn't have those they could just be generic skeleton of the old world of Cathay. But that actually, that doesn't mean that you can't if you want to. And this is one thing that I would say is a benefit for this kit over Bretonia. Bretonia is Bretonia. The Tomb Kings, however, if you felt you wanted to, you could easily ignore this go straight over to your other skeletons and make them as somewhere else. Uh, one of the best and most interesting things we ever used to do, and I this is an important thing, we used to love our kit bashing with the old world stuff because it was easy to do because of how these kits were made. This is what made it so much fun. You get your empire people and you mix them up with your skeletons or you mix them up with your zombies and you've got your own unique unit. You know, you're, you've got your own unique army. It's what I loved about old school 
Warhammer. Instead of all of these single pose miniatures, it is for this faction. If you don't have a lot of skill in converting miniatures, you it's hard to put your own passion into it because you can paint it a particular way, make, but if you don't have real skill at, at converting, you can't create anything unique. Whereas this, actually, grab that, get an Empire kit, mix them together, you have got an, a dead Empire army. I love doing the Empire one with the old zombies. The old zombies were fantastic for mixing in, I tell you right now, Empire troops. And particularly with the Von Karsteins, it just made so much sense. Anyway, back to this kit and this, because this is what matters. Right, these make you Kenry. But as you can see, they're still old sculpts, you know. So, we're, and this thing, if you're taking a very old sculpt like the skeleton kit, you are limited to what new things you can put into it. Because if you make it look too new and it's an add-on, it doesn't look right, you know. Um, but when you are trying to release a new game, technically, you are giving old miniatures. Now, I heard a rumour that there was a plan to make a thigh and to make Kislev. And I heard that rumour absolutely ages ago. And I think it was because Old World was declared when Total War 3 came out. So everyone got their passions going. I believe that's coming, but I'll talk about that in another video. I'm going to do a very specific video on the future direction of this. And we'll go from there. So, yes, we can make them Kenry. Great. Here's my next question. Um, do these have to go there? So these do these have to go on the foot skeletons or can we have mounted archers? Again, stay tuned. We might find out. <coughs> so how many of these conversion kits do we get? This is one of the key things, isn't it? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Each one can do... So each one can do 10 by the look of it. Yeah, each one can do 10 um, skeletons. There's four skeletons per sprue over here. So is it four skeletons? Yeah, there is. It's four skeletons per sprue. <laughs> A lot of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I don't want to do maths. <laughs> right. So whether or not we can get like a proper kind of conversion going, that's that's a big question, isn't it? I'm also kind of wondering about the skeleton's hands, as in like for the, the melee troops. Um, it, it is actually left me wondering, do we... So it looks to looks to me like actually it's more than it is actually more than ten you get per kit, isn't it? If you think about it carefully, because the shields are obviously for the spearmen or the uh, single hand weapon, and the bows are obviously for bow men, bow skellies. So actually, um, each kit technically gives you twenty, doesn't it? potential conversions so actually you 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 get more than that don't you you actually get two three four yeah you technically get 12 potential combinations uh you know 12 12 sprues worth of combinations skeleton uh shields or or bows so in that that vein not not as concerning <laughs> shall we say, as I originally felt. Okay, skeleton horses. So with with me and the skeleton horses, I have never really felt these skeleton. I mean, even going back years, of course, when I was a kid, yeah, cool skeleton horses. But for these, these lack any particular love. 
to be quite honest. Um, someone obviously was told to make skeleton horses years and years ago, and they made skeleton horses. But maybe due to moulding issues, maybe due to complexity issues, the issue of creating light, the, they have no dressing to them. Um, so, you know, it would have been lovely to see, like, you know, like, maybe, basically, for them to be a mockery of Bretonia, basically, with, you know, some kind of decoration. Now, maybe some someone who knows their Egyptology would, you know, would say, well, well, they never had those kind of things on Egyptian horses. They were just bare with saddles, and that's about all you got. Okay, fair enough. And you know what? If you're a skeleton horseman on a skeleton horse... You probably don't even need a saddle, do you? And an Egyptian saddle was probably nothing as complex as you would see a, you know, a modern saddle. But I think I would like to do a little bit of converting. Just a tiny bit. Use a bit of green stuff maybe to put a, a wrap over it. You know, so not a saddle per se, but maybe like... I don't know how it worked. Oh, yeah, I can't pretend I actually know how it worked back then. You know, in in Egypt. I mean, yeah, I'm saying back then in Egypt, but in Kemri. But maybe they would have had a, you know, a soft piece of leather over the top of the horse's flanks, uh, over the, its spine, buckled on just to reduce the kind of impact, I suppose, make it more comfortable for the rider, whether or not they would have full-blown stirrups, you know, I don't know, because I don't really know or can pretend to know the kind of technology that that might have, like a, a, an Egypt equivalent Camry would have had, but I think, you know, it's, it's definitely a thing to think about, to make it just more interesting than, yay, skeleton horses, well, okay, but there's, they're just like a bag of bones, and you know, I don't know. I think I think for myself, maybe because I've I've probably from a very early stage felt that these should have more, and then when the vampire accounts were provided with a complete refresh and. Their horses, their skeletal seeds became the proper nightmares and those nightmares had decoration on them, you know. That's probably when these were like, oh gosh, these are so old looking. And that's how I'm looking at this, unfortunately. Look, you can actually see the stamp on them. 1993. Is a bit old that. It's only 10 years younger than I am. Now, for Games Workshop, who 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 push themselves on being the latest, of being the best, of, you know, showing everyone that they can do the best stuff with the best technology, modern. You know, no one else can compare to us as a model maker. No one's going to make this better. Well, okay, I do 3D modelling. Now, I'm not saying I could do this better, because <laughs> I'm not at that stage. But someone, someone, you know, it wouldn't take much, would it, for someone to turn around and go, yeah, actually, my my alternative minis. Yeah. They, they don't call them Camry, they call them Undead Egypt, don't they? Yeah, Undead Egypt. Look at my Undead Egypt Knights. So... I'm, I'm going to do a video in a bit explaining what I want for the future of Old Hammer. Okay, and I'm going to hit on this concept a bit more. But, I don't know. Is, is, is this what I wanted to see in this kit? And no, and it ain't. It's really not. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, Games Workshop. That made me disappointed. And it's it's particularly disappointing on the most expensive kit. I do love the models. <laughs> nostalgia filter. Nostalgia filter. My nostalgia is going, yay! The skeletons from my youth. As I said, that, that skeleton there's got 1993 on it. That's horse. 
I'm pretty certain they're from the same era, like those skeleton warriors. Okay, so, you know, right. Now, this is where things might tell a little bit different. So I'm just going to kind of flip this over because it's important. I'm going to check the date, 2002. Why does this matter? Because unlike those skeletons there, which I think were 1993, and then kind of remastered into a new, like a new mold due to age, I'm pre pretty certain that this was a 2002 model. Probably coming at the very end of um, hand making miniatures on that cusp of creating CGI miniatures, um, heading towards the the way things are done now. Now, we can see that these are bespoke Kemri skeletons. So they're not just skeletons that you can add bits to. They are Kemri skeletons. How do I know? Well, look, simple things. You know, you can see there's no alternative head. They are very clearly Kemri heads. You have got a slightly shorter, like, spear staff. You've got very clear things like bands, you know, metal bands that very clearly evoke the Kemri aesthetic. Bandages very, you know, there and on the actual thing. This skeleton torso, that's very clearly Kemri armour. You know, uh, look at this. Oh, <laughs> the Kemri kind of loincloth, you know. The skeletons here are Kemri skeletons. They were designed as Kemri skeletons from the off. They weren't just upgraded with an additional sprue. So this, you know, is what I kind of wanted from this. You know, something that very clearly is what it's supposed to be. You know, and it's a nice chariot, to be quite honest. You know, I kind of, you know, it's it's got very smooth lines on it. You know, it's very, like, nice. There's some nice decoration and details on the front. Um, to some extent, you've got that kind of... How do I put this? Uh, you know, obviously, in the Warhammer world, there were older races than humans, like lizard men. So, in that kind of world, the lizard men were synonymous with the Aztecs and Incas. Uh, humans then adopted certain trends. So, you see that there. Um, with Bretonia, they frequently resettled elven settlements after they left the area. So, the Bretonians have a sort of elven element to them you know they have that medieval europe but there are clues that they have been inspired by the elves and you can feel that actually maybe they've been inspired by the lizard men i like the chariot the chariot is what i want from kemri these have made me happy okay i approve <laughs> I feel like I've been very negative about this kit and I don't want to be and as I said my nostalgia filter tells me I love these models I don't hate them okay so don't think that I despise them because they're old sometimes something that is old can be so well done why make it better an example would be the Fabius Bile model it was perfect when it came out when they decided to make a new Fabius file actually all they did is upscale him because the old model looked small the original model though had all the core elements but after so many years it was old and because it was old it looked wrong next to the new ones these kind of uh, these kind of changes matter i could have probably coped with the old skeleton horsemen that i've put over here these ones i could have actually coped with them shrugged my shoulders and said i'm happy you know they look fine if they changed the horses and made them look like kenry horses <laughs> and i would have been like deal i'm happy with that i'll keep it yeah it it 
I, it's still got the skeleton horsemen that I love. But I've got a sprue to make them look Kenry. Very clearly make them look Kenry. So it's a rant I'm having there. But I hope you understand it's a rant from a good place. What I want is to... I want this game to flourish and thrive. I want to see people with massive ranked up armies facing off against each other. I want this game to be loved. I want people to play it. And yes, they have done this to, to get the member berries running from people like myself. To draw us into make us desire it more than life itself. But we have got older and because we've got older, you know, many of us have, you know, gone past the point where you can easily trap us with nostalgia. You know, we're not, we're a bit, you know, and if you're falling into that trap of let's get the member berries going, let's get people going, oh, old hammer. But we've been used now to decades of incredible progress in miniatures and we want our member berries but we also want our future so with that let's look at this let's see if this new kit shows us what old hammer could be but still manages to somehow mould and gel with those ones from the past. Can it do it? Is it done right? Is it done well? So let's delve in. Let's really see this. Let's convince ourselves that this was worth the £20 extra. <laughs> now when I say it like that, the answer is yes. But, you know... This is really the only new thing in the box. Now, it is a big thing. And many people might say, well, yeah, do you know what how much this will cost on its own? Yeah, do, I kind of do have a good idea of how much this thing might cost on its own. I've, I've got Age of Sigmar Dragons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, let's have a think about this first very carefully. Let's get this right. Okay. You've got obviously the boniness well we want the boniness yeah, that makes sense uh you know and you can see they the, the you know they're quite smooth they're well put together you've got the you know the, the very clearly bony wings uh i could imagine someone converting this here to have the you know like tattered wings laying over it uh, and I'm sure that would be a wonderful conversion. We've got things like this bony crested headpiece, you know, and it looks looks good. It's got nice cracks all the way throughout. Uh, you know, we've got all of these sort of, you know, the aesthetics there, um, the Camry aesthetic. So we can see this. Uh, let's check this. Does this aesthetic match up? Yep. The, the aesthetic does actually continue. So I, so far, I think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to look out of place. Here's our leech's body. Uh, whether or not he can be built in a, a different way, maybe he could be built as a she, that would be nice as well. The, uh, let's have a look. So, you know, and you've got the trail of bandages, as you would expect with Camry, you know, these are the kind of things we look for. Uh, nice, you know, heavy bone chests and big beefy bone, you know, like bits. Uh, again, my member berries are triggering. Okay, this here, this is very old world dragon. You know, the, the kind of very bendy spines kind of thing, rather than the big beasts of the Age of Sigmar, you know, the... The, the beasts of the the dragons of the age of sigma are chunky boys whereas the the dragons of the old world 
oh, you know, like the serpentine, they're long, you know, and we want that. Yes, there's a few beefy dragons that you see here and there, but overall, this matters, okay, for the aesthetic. Um, for If we were to go get an old dragon, like really old dragon, it would be very flexible. It would have a serpentine body. Again, the Camry aesthetic appropriately running through the miniature. We have a headpiece for it. Looks quite uh, gaunt uh, as if the skin stretched over a tight face. We have some nice weapon aesthetics to go on. So it looks like we have choices in weapons potentially. I hope that's what I'm seeing here. Um, yeah, we got, I'm not sure, is this like goat, um, like maybe a ghost light potentially? Uh, we have a dead cat! Yay, a dead cat! I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased we got a dead cat. Okay, um, with, if there wasn't a dead cat, I think we would have had an issue here. Um, it would have been, you know, downgraded to rubbish if it didn't have a dead cat. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. I'm sorry. It is. It's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. I'm ha I like this. I'm, go I'm going to enjoy painting this. I'm going to enjoy painting it by basically spray painting it one colour, shading it, and then dry brushing it. Because it's going to be the quickest, dumb, quickest monster I've ever painted in my life. Woo! Right. I think then, this, this, this for me, you know, brings it around a bit, okay? I mean, it does. It, it, it makes me kind of go, you know what? This is a really good kit, what you pay for, yeah? I, uh, I think it's, it's definitely an improvement. It blends just about the right amount of old and new together. But I'm still kind of feeling that too much in this box is too old. Okay, so I think I think that's possibly my um, my biggest thumbs down. Okay, the age of the range, the Bretonian range looks roughly two thousand and three. There's a lot of stamps on this that claim two thousand and two. However. Uh, I don't believe that's accurate because I remember that skeleton infantry kit from when I was a teenager. It's one of the earliest kits I had. You don't tend to forget those early kits. They, they, um, they kind of sit in your mind. They're, they're the kind of thing that reminds you that that's why I started the hobby. And it's great to have those member berries and nostalgia. But, times have changed, technology has improved, should a new game have so much old in the box. Once again we've got our real box, I'm not going to open it, I'm just going to have a good look quickly, you know, so again that lovely blue that we saw last time, uh, again, you know, do we ask ourselves, should we have had a different colour on the rule book? Do we believe that when we're spending this much money on an item, we should feel something be different, unique, special? Hmm. Fair argument, I hope. Okay, let's have a good look. How to put them together. See, you can see here, I've noticed this as well about these books, okay? Um, these do not look like they've been computer generated. They look like literally photographs of the real models that have been put together. It, it kind of tells you that this is not from the age of CGI, of computer generated modeling and things like that. Oh, cool, you can make skeleton arches. Bing. Okay, I'm, imp I'm improving my, um, my I'm putting a, an extra thumb up now. <laughs> okay, uh, skeleton crew members. You've got a lot of options on these chariots. I tell you that, you know, they're not all just um, one thing. You have choices, so I'm quite happy with that. Let's see what else we've got here. Now here's the bone dragon. You, now you can see it, it. You can very silly cl clearly see that this is from a computer. It's been built using modern methods. Um, now of course they've tried their best to kind of harmonise it with the older ones. 
but you can tell it's a new model and it's with that you know that age of things right so we've definitely got some interesting things here of course we've got our army I won't, I, I won't delve too deep into things like the army because you could potentially get a YouTube strike doing something like that it's, it's annoying but it's just I'm sure that I can get away with showing pictures of how it's built because that's hardly what you might call game breaking <laughs> okay but probably showing the rules might get me a naughty on YouTube okay now bases as with the last one we've got some bigger size bases I talked about how um, I was finding it interesting that base sizes had gone up and I believe that you might be able to buy circle to square converters for certain miniatures uh, of course nothing in the age of sigma matches the kemri or the bretonians which is why they chose these obviously um but things like the gloom spike gits could be turned into night goblins and of course if you've got a like say empire that we're using for the militia that is a genuine force so again, we've got square bases, as we would expect, set a die, uh, possibly somewhere under here. I don't see any transfers, but to be fair, I don't think the shields really need transfers on these. Right. Well, there we go. That is the old world. That is the two boxes for the old world done. Now, again, is it worth it? does the price make it worth it mm. well you get a lot of miniatures there's no doubt about that there's a huge number of miniatures in this box it is a grand army okay i can't fault it as being a grand army um how much did a pack of skeletons cost back in the day I can't. F so four, eight, four, six, I think you used to get four of those in a box. Now, back in the day, I'm sure, maybe ten pound then. Of course, that's then. This is now. I can't just you know compare the two. <laughs> you know, but one, two, three. Four. So call it four units if they come in packs of 20. What they would be about 35 now, potentially. So, you know, probably the Skeleton Warriors for cost now cover like a huge part of the box. But as I said, they're old Skeleton Warriors. How much would have this cost years ago? Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, as I said, it's always hard when you're trying to pull your memories of the past and compare them now and, and remind yourself of how much things cost and, you know, add things up. And I don't want to go down there, oh, things were cheaper back when I was a lad, because that's not really going to get you anywhere, is it? That's not going to tell you if it's worth it. Um, of course, from my perspective... I like it, you know, this is a good kit. It's got, you know, some lovely models in it, but it's also got some models that I have no love for. Um, uh, and that kind of thing, you know, will will kind of play on your mind a little bit, and rightly so. Um, am I happy about paying 175 for this? I don't think I am. I know that drag. I think obviously they put that dragon in there because they knew that anyone who'd really played this game for years would know about some of these older models, really older models. They would remember being teenagers in the 90s actually pulling these things together. So, of course, they're going to be like, wow, this range is old. So they put that dragon in here to really beef it up and to make it worth getting. Still, um, 
yeah, the, the volume that they've put into it, you know, you've got to remember that these, these skeleton warriors have probably paid for themselves a billion times over now at Games Workshop, you know, because of it. So there we go. You know, I'm, 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 I'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter. You know, I'd like to see if you think it's worth it rather than me. And again, I, I like the old models. I think they have a charm to them. I I follow um, old, what's it called? The, the old school. I think it's run in either Spain or Portugal. And they... They get hold of old miniatures and they bring life back to them. They paint them up as if it was still, you know, the 90s and early 2000s. They build scenery that, that matches the aesthetic. It's beautiful. I, I love seeing it. I don't look at those old miniatures and just say, oh, gosh, look how, you know, old they look. I look at them and I say, you know what, my goodness, some guy sculpted something that small you know so it's victoria lamb and everyone and you know those people back then you know they, they did amazing things with what was there um and i want to fight those battles again and this and, and the Bretonia is going to allow me to do that tell me what you think like and subscribe to my channel and Dang well comment, you know, tell me what your thoughts are, okay? And I will see you in my next video because I'm going to try and do something where I'm I'm going to sort of think to the future of Old World and, 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 and say what I think is going to happen in the future. I'll see you next time.